So I'm going to show you why this does matter. So um, one of the things that I started on many years ago was to try to figure out, can patients tell the difference in the knee implants? So and you, many people are aware of this because I published this a few times. And the way we did it, we, we did paired studies at 640 patients, and they had a different knee in each side. And we followed them over time with the sole purpose of trying to figure out the different knees. And here's the five we, we ultimately looked at. By cruciate knee, and posterior cruciate only, posterior stabilized, medial lateral pivot, most people call this medial congruent now, at least uh, Zimmer does, mobile bearing. And what we found out is people could tell the difference, at least 80% of the time they could. They could tell one knee was different than the other. And beyond that, they would have preferences uh, on which knee they liked better to do different things in their life. Here's an example of it. That's a medial pivot uh, knee. And then on the one with screws on the left, that's a bicruciate knee. You can see the tibial eminence. These turned out to be the two best knees as far as people preferring them. These, these two preferred over all the other options posterior stabilized, posterior cruciate only. Turns out the, the medial congruence seems to be the most likely to duplicate your normal knee, but the bicruciate knee was always a good one. And that's how medial congruent works, ball and socket on the medial aspect, although it could be the lateral uh, too, and it pivots around that. And if you compare those two, they were about a wash, interestingly enough. Yeah. There's the reasons that people would might have a preference. Felt more normal, single leg weight bearing. Uh, noise was amazing when I did not know about this till we started. People don't like noise from their knees and it's common to have. Some couldn't tell you a reason. They just say, well, I like it better. No good reason. Feel more stable, stronger on stairs. We take them out in the hallway in the building where I am here and walk up the stairwells with them and see which one they tended to favor on the stairs. That was probably the close to, closest to objective because these were all good results. The tr trouble with knees is that the, all the Im implants we have, they work great. And so how do you decide which one's better than another? Does, or does kinematics even matter? And the reason there's a difference is the kinematics. The noise was uh, particularly interesting. We wrote a whole paper on that. And the quietest knee is a bicruciate knee, uh, as far as total knees go. So oh, they all, all the knees had good results. And the ACL is not always there. So that's not something you can just choose to have. If it's not, it, it doesn't have the benefit. And medial pivot good knee, but you got to do a great job on it. It's, it's a little finicky uh, to do. It has to be rotationally perfect. If it's not, it doesn't work. If you malrotate the, the uh, medial congruent knee, Zimmer uh, had, uh, with the persona made a specific tibia. It's less likely to malrotate it because it, it's shaped to match the tibia itself. That's an advantage. To, so you won't malrotate it. And there's other issues about stress shielding uh, that, that matter too, but it's probably not a kinematic argument. The, the uh, kinematics matter on joint line and, and issues like that. That really goes more to, to by cruciate knees. And then the, the ongoing argument about kinematic alignment versus anatomic versus uh, mechanical. Most of these are, are following a, a more kinematic uh, alignment, anatomic meaning, and watching the extra rotation. A, a little information which I haven't shared before because we we've just finished it goes to um, some patients, 73 in fact, that we treated with a second unicompartmental, getting at this, this do people care? Because unicompartmental needs naturally are more natively attractive as kinematic. And this worked. I didn't think it would, but it did. So we just put a second uni, show you some pictures of that. 
you can also revise to totally, which is what most people do. And that works 79, 80% of the time, good or excellent. But you might need a revision component. Our second unis, we took a uni and made it into a bicruciate knee. Those are all outpatients with primary components, a pretty straightforward procedure. Looks just like a uni compartmental, not any different. So it's attractive in that sense as far as it's cheaper, outpatient, shorter recovery. And the question is, does it work? And does it have good results? And the answer is, it, it does. It doesn't work on patients like this that have just <laughs> uh, all sort of complaints, but a normal one. Here's an example. Uh, one of the longer term ones, this patient had a lateral uni compartmental knee. It worked perfect for years. She came back with two problems, medial compartment, patellofemoral compartment disease on the operated leg and, a, and then a valgus uh, degenerative knee on her right side. This turned out to be an interesting case. So here's what we did. We put a medial uni compartmental replacement, kept her lateral uni because it was fine and also resurfaced the patellofemoral joint on that knee and then did a total knee on the other side. So this woman could compare uh, basically a bicruciate knee to a total knee. She liked the bicruciate knee better. She had her natural cruciates, her, her native tibia, and without the stress shielding that is stemmed a component. And it, it just worked more normally for her. They were both good results as far as range of motion, stability and all, but she preferred the bicruciate uh, solution if it's a, a failed uni or put improperly one, done one, I, this doesn't apply, this paper. But uh, what, what I do with those, if I can, is I just keep it a uni and revise the uni. And here's an example of that. But that here's a patellofemoral uh, patient came back with medial compartment disease, did a medial uni, left the lateral alone, left the previous patellofemoral joint alone. These are hard operations to do. You can see how close these implants get to each other. Uh, but there, again, there's some patient preference uh, issues with this, indicating that kinematics do matter. People can tell the difference between a native knee or a partially native knee and, and one that's not or more like it. Here's a more standard thing where if somebody, a patient had a medial unit compartment or came back with lateral disease. We just did a lateral uh, uni, outpatient, good, easy recovery. This is a, a knee like I would have seen Len Marmer do years ago. So while this might seem an interesting concept today, if you think back to, to way back when, when knees started, uh, Len Marmer and uh, Gunston, their, their knee implants were just uni compartmentals. They just put two of them in all the time. They didn't think twice about it. It was a normal thing for them to do. And th this kind of goes back to that. It, it, it can work. It's, it's demanding surgery, admittedly, to balance these knees up. But this is a more likely to be preferred knee, indicating that patients, if you compare it to, say, a total knee, patients can tell. Kinematics do matter. How your knee feels, how the ligaments operate, how it rotates probably they all flex and extend pretty well. There is there is definite things uh, to it. So here's the variations where you could do a, in theory, uh, keep the tibial, uh, proximal tibia intact, except for the minor intrusion for the unis, keep the tibial eminence, keep the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, and then do whatever else you might, unicompartmental, bicompartmental, even a tricompartmental could be all done. It becomes a little unwieldy just on a practical and expense basis if you have more than a, a couple of implants. And that, that's probably the biggest barrier to it. But it looks to, pretty clear that the data do show that there are kinematic relevances to the different types of knees. Not that they aren't all good, they are, but there are differences uh, between them. So that'd be my kind of in introductory concepts uh, to the kinematics matter. I think they do, and people can tell beyond that.